Good morning. Um, Hello. <laughs> thank you, Creative Mornings, for inviting us. It's a real honour to be here. And um, we're here to talk about hidden. Yeah. Uh, for a while, me and Celia thought it would be a genius idea to hide outside and do the whole presentation from the outside. <laughs> but we've decided against doing that. But weirdly, that is actually something Celia has done before. So. At AUT, in fact. <laughs> Um, my name's Ella, and my hidden talent is I'm an opera singer. And my name's Celia, and my hidden talent is that I speak four languages. Uh, so quirky facts. Quirky facts. We're all about the facts today. <laughs> and buttons. Uh, so salary and hidden um, are quite closely linked. I mean, for us, we identify hidden about um, really seeing potential in un unused, unidentified spaces. and trying to sort of celebrate that through site specific design and installation. Yes. So how we started. Um, Celia and I were both working on the Rugby World Cup for my parents who run Inside Out Productions and we were working together and just loved each other. We were wonderful together so we thought maybe we should do something weird and kooky and Aunt in the Dark was coming up in its second year and Celia asked me to do PR for Art in the Dark, which I thought was very strange. So instead, we came up with a big idea of flying a man through the park with eight metre long angel wings, and he landed in a field of light where I was singing opera, and it was just this sort of epic, really naughty, big idea, because there were thousands of people in the park, and we flew an angel over their heads. It was quite surreal. And after we did that idea, we kind of went, well, now we could do anything, so maybe we should start a company. So it was done. <laughs> Celery was born in January 2012. The 9th of January. <laughs> <laughs> um, we started immediately. We actually, I think we started on like the 3rd of January, <laughs> which obviously no one's working at that point. We were we so excited. Threw ourselves into <laughs> anything and everything. We were at the office making files, just creating ridiculous work for ourselves and we said yes to everything. We handed up flyers. We made two-story very complex sets for $200. I lectured at AUT. I did computer software training for the top twins which was really odd. <laughs> <laughs> and we did absolutely any and every job that came our way. Creative job. <laughs> so basically in that first year we survived and we got to the end of the year and went, I think we're really onto something here. Yeah, when we started, Celia and I, it was just me and Celia waddling around, just seeing things that other people couldn't see and going, oh my God, look how cool that building is. If only we could just light it. And we started to recognize how much of a skill that is recently and started to kind of really acknowledge that she and I both kind of have the same eyes and that we're very, very lucky to have actually found each other and to, to look the same. <laughs> Not <Aww>. physically. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Um, so, yeah, so we, we amazingly think the same and we finish each other's sentences and it's something quite incredible to have found someone like that because we go, you know, we go to a site or for a site recce or go to a new space and normally it's in the weirdest of places and you're like, oh, this would be amazing. You turn around and Alice go, yes, <laughs> that would be amazing. So it's, it's quite exciting to actually have someone who just sees the same things you do. So as a very young company and uh, we've only sort of just started, it's very daunting to stand up in front of a whole room full of creatives and talk about what we've learned and who we are. But we've always kind of been a ballsy little company. So here's five salary lessons. We <laughs> <laughs> really were sure if that would work. Thanks for letting us do the AT. Thank you. Yes. 
Um, so, so, yes, lesson one is, well, not lesson one, but just side note, <laughs> confetti is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Always use confetti. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you go. Five <laughs> lessons. I mean, my lesson. Yeah, <laughs> Celia's got some lessons. Um, so, number one, uh, figure out what's important to you. And so when we first uh, started salary, we sort of sat down together and talked about our priorities for business and for what was really important to us and our key thing that really came out of it, our key priority was travel. So Yeah, we sort of decided that we'd pay ourselves terrible, terrible amounts of money. We paid ourselves three hundred dollars a week for the first six months just so that we could be putting money away so that we could travel. It was just really important to us that we went overseas and saw as much as we possibly could to just get inspired. So in the brief time that we've been salary, we've, um, we've been overseas, we've been to um, Wellington, not overseas, but we've been to Wellington seven times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been to uh, Sydney four times, we've been to Israel, London, Hong Kong, Singapore, Macau, and um, most of this has been research fu um, funded through uh, research grants, but we also have saved up like, everything uh, all our profit goes into travelling. We go and we see light festivals and art festivals and um, go see a whole heap of exhibitions. We've seen shows from all over the world and we went to a zoo one time, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, we meet with like incredible artists, like our, our big heroes in the industry and they give us amazing time and amazing influence. So we find that by seeing international works, it makes our work better and that it's a really important thing that we travel and look outwards and inwards. <laughs> um, so um, when we're back in Auckland, which is 90% you know, of the time, we are constantly researching and we do that by going to every theatre show, every art exhibition, every design or event um, and we're always online looking looking at research I mean looking on Pinterest looking on blogs and websites just getting every inspiration that is out there yeah feeding our eyes we we really we love Auckland and think Auckland's amazing but we go and see every show under the sun so the good the bad and the ugly just to try and learn as much as possible like even if it's an awful show you learn what not to do. So that's what we do. Another important lesson. So amongst our audacious goals, um, our other thing that's really important to us is birthdays. And <laughs> that's our one rule in the company um, policy is that birthdays are always off. <laughs> lesson two, salary <laughs> sticks together. <laughs> <laughs> Celia and I have very different skill sets and we actually took a really long time to discover that because we thought we were exactly the same with just slightly different hair and we sort of went around <laughs> thinking we could do whole jobs completely on our own and, and not rely on each other to sort of bounce ideas off and it's only been recently that we've gone, oh, you're the finisher and I'm the starter, you're the designer and I'm the producer, whatever. So it's really nice to sort of celebrate the individual within the company. Oh yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. so was, I didn't move it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So it was when I was sobbing into my paper mache wine glasses that I sort of realised I'm not very good at making props. <laughs> <laughs> and it was when I was, I just kept zoning out in the tech tech talks and Ella wasn't there and I was going, oh my god, why? I, I just don't know anything about tech language. And it was, that was when it was really clear to us that to know your strengths and to learn your strengths. And that's what, from those lessons, that's something we've learnt to celebrate in the individual and we've really taken that into our team um, as salary productions. So this is our um, salary family and it's made up of people that can do everything. And we've handpicked them all and they're just the most incredible team um, behind us and it's really about curating your company that we have a salary office team who all 
genuinely manage us. <laughs> and so they, you know, they are telling us what, you know, how to, how to keep on afloat. And, yeah. you know, we've got our production geniuses and our Art in the Dark family and our techs that really say yes to everything. We had, uh, we did an event recently called A Weird Night Out and we did it in Imperial Lane. We took over Imperial Lane and uh, one of the biggest problems was trying to get the fire approved because we had 900 people in the building and they were saying no, which is ridiculous. So <coughs> we built a stage over the fire exit, so we had a two metre high stage so that people, if there was a fire, would run underneath the stage to get out. And it was just one of those like really clever ideas that our team sort of came up with and executed, which we were very impressed with because it's that never accepting no for an answer that I think was, which we've surrounded ourselves with, which is awesome. Yeah, so <laughs> surround yourself with yes people is essentially <laughs> the key to that. <laughs> Number three lesson. People will get on board with a good idea. So this is where I do this fancy thing. And we go, this is a good idea. So um, Art in the Dark is sort of a prime example for us of what like sheer passion and determination can make. Um, Art in the Dark actually started here as my um, on his research project and it really was just this small group of friends that made this happen essentially and it was just about talking so passionately to our community, to the local board members and to artists and businesses and just getting people on board and people will get on board with a good idea. So Art in the Dark's now um, in its fifth year and um, since Salary uh, started producing it two years ago, it's, it's sort of jumped into this new um, league, I guess, of now it's us talking passionately to people about it. And I guess the thing with us is that we just don't take no for an answer. <laughs> So, okay, that's yes. the end of that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys are getting into it. So these are our uh, two this year stats that we're looking at achieving. Um, last year we had 55,000 people come to Art in the Dark and we managed over 43 artists. And um, it was just filled with so many different ages, which I think is the most amazing thing about Art in the Dark is that you've got the families, you've got the kids, and then you also get sort of the 25 to 35 demographic, which is a really tricky thing to target. Um, so we are looking at making it four nights this year. It's the 13th to the 16th of November. 17th? Yeah, four That's nights, right. how many nights that is. Um, and uh, we're trying to start a speakers forum and do some more like flying an international artist over and having him speak would be interesting. So yeah, we're sort of developing this Art in the Dark to making it more of a festival. And our fourth lesson. And this is probably the most useful of lessons um, that we learned and that we really take so seriously in our company. Um, is just start. I mean, there's you can talk about anything for so long, but what's really important is to just if you've got an idea, just start. And we met each other, um, and within two months, we'd quit our jobs and cancelled return flights to to London. And we've been full time salary ever since. And we really wholeheartedly believe in the sink or swim attitude. Yeah, a, a wise man once said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing wrong. Because the important thing is, if it's worth doing, do it. And we sort of believe that wholeheartedly. The fifth and final lesson is find beauty in hidden spaces. And this is, I, I mean, this is such a beautiful one to end on, I mean, particularly given the, the theme. Uh, we look for beauty everywhere, and that's what we're constantly on the lookout for and so we've prepared a little something yeah like what what's the hidden beauty in a lecture theatre what do you <laughs> think yeah what do you think what? Hey, go away. <laughs> oh, <look fun. laughs> Just